morning all. There's a reason why I decided this morning to do the video here. I tried to do it yesterday actually. I went down to my um, my mum and dad's place with uh, with my missus and my little girl. And uh, I tried to record it on the beach because it was really nice with the sunset. But um, yeah, it was too windy so it didn't come out. So I thought um, there's a reason, as I say, I decided to uh, come down by the river today to record this. I'll come to that in a second. Um, it's really nice around here. Nice and sort of peaceful. No, uh, no speed cameras about. But there are other government risks by the river, as I mentioned. Um, so yeah, I was when I was driving down yesterday. Anyway, it's about a, it's probably about an 80 or 90 mile drive. I made a kind of conscious effort to um, to sort of um, pay attention to where the speed cameras were because obviously we just kind of. We switch off from it really, and we're kind of like, oh, this speed camera is slow down. There's a sign that says we're going to get fined, slow down. Um, it's 50 miles an hour on the motorway. Uh, now I thought I'm just going to pay attention to where these cameras are, and uh, and how it affects the traffic flow. And I'm telling you, 100%. If you make a conscious effort of doing it, it's it's so obvious that the traffic jams are caused by the speed cameras. So, um, I know that's kind of stating the obvious, but when you really sort of pay attention and make a conscious effort to, you know, to kind of like just pay attention to it. Try it next time you go on a longest journey, you'll see what I mean. But yeah, the, the main purpose of today's newsletter was um, we got an email last, last week from a BTST member called Graham who sent in a picture of a speed camera van. From memory, I think it was parked in a um, in a bus stop. And it's kind of painted up so that it doesn't look like a speed camera van, obviously. So, I thought that was interesting. I remember about 10 years ago, there was a whole spate of it. And uh, we did quite a lot of newsletters on it 10 years ago, or eight years ago, however long ago it was. And I remember there was an AA van, <laughs> or it was painted up as an AA van, that was um, that was disguised, or it was a speed camera van disguised as, I think it was AA, don't sue me the AA, it could have been RAC, someone else, but it was something like that. And I'm going to go this way. And anyway, yeah, so I was going up to Cadwell Park to race last weekend, which was great, I really enjoyed it. And sitting in a kind of traffic jam on the way up there, and what did I see? Another one of these speed camera vans that's purporting to be something else. It was some kind of something aggregates on the side of it. I took a picture, um, stationary with engine off at the time, you understand. And uh, I'm just wondering, is, is this a new are they kind of like uh, reintroducing this strategy? Because I haven't heard about these things for quite a few years. Um, we used to get BTS team members sending in pictures and reports of them quite a lot. But they're coming back, that's what I was wondering. So yeah, anyway, that was the... Uh, I'm going to get some pictures, or get the pictures and get the video guy to, um, to put them up for you. But... Um, yeah, the reason I started the vlog by the river today, I thought it was quite funny really. I was actually laughing last night. I was sending screenshots to a friend of mine and uh, I was sort of hysterically laughing while I was <laughs> lying in bed before I went to bed. Uh, as he was saying, ooh, big red text, I'm so scared. I found it funny. But um, yeah, so I've got a, a small, I live near the river, well, on the river, so I've got a small river boat. Um, don't use it very often, I've probably been on it, I bought it about a year ago, it was really cheap. Um, so, I bought it, I've probably been on it f five times since I bought it. And you know, it's moored up close to my house, I pay the guy who owns the mooring a monthly fee to keep it there. And anyway, I get this email through last, or must have been yesterday afternoon, 
And it's basically a threatening letter from the Environment Agency. And it's essentially saying, uh, the, the title of it was Notice of Offence. So apparently I've committed an offence because I haven't paid a boat licence, which I didn't even know was a thing. I wasn't aware that boat licences existed. So it's essentially another tax. So apparently it's a thousand pound fine and I'm a very naughty boy and if they don't, if I don't pay, um, if I don't pay this boat license, they're going to fi find me a thousand pounds and steal my boat. So they'll just come along, take the boat out of the water, it's not mine anymore. I'm almost tempted not to pay and just say, go on then, take it. But that will, probably wouldn't be the most sensible thing to do, so I'm, ultimately I'm going to comply with the extortion. Just like we do in all other fields when it comes to government extortion and the reason they're doing this I'm 95% I'm convinced the reason they're doing this or well, so sort of systemically doing it is because they're out of money and they need they need the money that we put our labour into earning to, um, to pay back the debt that they've been accruing from uh, from borrowing from the Bank of England. So that's my theory anyway. I, I think it's more than a theory. I've looked into it quite a lot. But I'll probably do some more stuff on that in future anyway. But it's a beautiful morning. I don't care about these guys trying to extort me. I'm not gonna get annoyed about it, but I do care um, on a sort of wider level about, you know, British people, and people in all countries, for that matter, getting extorted by governments and feeling as if we have to comply with them. And, uh, oh yeah, that's it. I wanted to play you a... I saw a, um, a great... Well, I thought it was a great documentary slash film the other night called Renegade on... I think it was on Amazon. Uh, and it's about a guy called David Icke, who some of you may have heard of, and your initial reaction, a lot of you, a lot of people will be, oh, that guy's a nutter, he's a crank. But I'll tell you what, I think he speak quite, speaks quite a lot of sense. So I think I'm going to play you a clip from it just to end this vlog. You know, I really need to get more fit. I'm not used to um, walking and talking. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit out of breath. But yeah, I'm going to play you, um, try and play you a, a clip from the, from the film. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in this kind of thing, I'd probably suggest going, going and checking it out. We had a, a tax imposed in the 1980s by Margaret Thatcher called the poll tax. It was a desperately unjust tax. And large numbers of people simply refused to pay the tax. What happened? They had to change the tax and drop it. Not only that, it was the start of the end for Margaret Thatcher, who was perceived as the Iron Lady and who was impregnable. And all people have done is say, no, not doing it. Someone comes out of Downing Street, someone comes out of the White House. They say, we've had a meeting and this is what's gonna happen. What if enough people say, we're not doing it. We're not doing that. Where is their power? There is none. The power of the few is in the acquiescence of the many. And if we stop acquiescing with our own enslavement, we cannot be enslaved. We are at a fork in the road. If we go on as we are, we'll live in a fascistic Orwellian global state within decades, and I'm being seriously optimistic when I say decades, if we take our power back and we start questioning and, and we, we stop fighting among ourselves, then 7.5 billion people can't be controlled by a handful. 
if the 7.5 billion A know what's going on and B won't have it. I'd say that's wise words from a crazy man. Wouldn't you agree? Let me know in the comments. Cheers guys, see you soon.